Hear now God's holy word as it comes to us this morning from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come upon us as you came upon the Virgin Mary And as you were born in her, so may you be born in us. Amen. Last Sunday we lit the Joseph candle and we talked some about Joseph. How Joseph uh, knew that this child uh, that was forming within his wife-to-be Uh, was not of his doing. Um, We can understand why Joseph was slow to believe. Um, We can understand why Joseph figured that this Mary must have been in relationship with somebody else, um, some other man other than him. And so he he decided that he would quietly dismiss her until the dream in which the angel comes to Joseph and convinces him otherwise. Uh, Convinces him that you're right, Joseph. You had no part in this. (laughs) The Spirit of God is the one who had a part in it. It's a similar experience now for Mary. Um, When the angel comes to Mary and says to her, do not be afraid. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. Now those are powerful words. Mary was a Jew. She knew who David was. David was the great ruler, king of Israel. And she knew that somehow it was something very powerful for this child that was conceived in her to be of that ancestry. The angel goes on to say, He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary says to the angel, how can this be? 
And my first thought in hearing that question from Mary, how can this be, is how can this one that is to be born be son of the Most High? How can this one who is to be born be of the throne of the ancestor David? How can this one who is to be born from me reign over the house of Jacob? How can this one who is to be born have a kingdom that will be forever? The king. The king that will be forever. But that wasn't Mary's question of disbelief, was it? That's not what she was having trouble believing. What was she having trouble believing? She was having trouble believing she was pregnant. That was her question, not how can this be that he'll reign over the house of David and Jacob, that his kingdom will have no end. She wasn't asking how can that be, she was asking how can it be that I would give birth to a child when I'm a virgin. Her question was in the present sense, not in the future sense. When the angel tells her that the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, the child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. Then she says, let it be, let it be according to your word. One of my favorite songs is Let It Be. <laughs> that old Paul McCartney song, The Beatles. Um, and one wonders, well, did he get that let it be from this reading? Well in part, but he wrote the song in 19, the late 1960s, 68, 69, and at that time the Beatles were breaking apart. He was troubled by the fact that the group was probably not going to be the Beatles anymore. They were going to just all go their separate way. And uh, Paul McCartney, during that period of time, went the way of a lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs, a lot of clubbing, as they call it, um, down depressed that these global famous Beatles were going to break apart. Paul McCartney's mother died when he was 14 years old. Um, and Paul McCartney talks about how he would try to create the image of his mother to remember what she looked like. And he had trouble doing it. 1968, 69, Paul McCartney's now about 13, 14 years past the death of his mother. He's in his late 20s. And Paul McCartney tells the story of how one restless night in a dream, his mother comes to him. And all of the troubles he's having, the depression, the drugs, and says to him, Paul, let it be. Let God take over. Let it flow. Don't you can't fix it. Let it be. And Paul McCartney writes that he saw his mother's face so clearly in a way that he hadn't since she died. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Why? His mother's name was Mary. <laughs> Interestingly. Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. There will be an answer. Let it be. But back to the other Mary, the Mary of Scripture, the Mary of our Jesus, the mother of Jesus. 
the Holy Spirit says to her that God will overshadow you. And this one who is to be born in you will be holy. That image of overshadowing you is an image found frequently throughout the Old Testament where the Spirit of God overshadows the people of God. Um, when they're liberated from Egypt, that Spirit of God overshadows them, surrounds them, envelops them. When they create the tabernacle of God, it says that the, the Spirit of God overshadows that tabernacle. And so we have that same image here, that Mary's womb becomes the tabernacle of God, the dwelling place of God. And that spirit overshadows her. And Mary says to the angel, in utmost trust, let it be. A trust in God that reaches into a darkness that's far beyond her comprehension. A mystery that she can't fathom. That the Son of God would be born within her. You think of those words that she spoke, let it be, and you think of, of all that happened to Mary through the years. How she had to, in her pregnancy, travel with Joseph to Bethlehem where Jesus was born. How she had to put up with the poverty of the stable in his birth. How they then had to flee to Egypt to save this baby. How as Jesus grows up, out of some sense of, in her mind, disrespect, he disappears and they find him in the temple. He says, what are you doing here? Why did you leave us? And then in Jesus' ministry, where the people come knocking at the door and they say, your mother and your, your brother and sister are out the door. They want to see you. And Jesus says, all of these are my mother and my brother and my sister. <clears throat> How must have that mother Mary felt? Almost pushed away. And yet she said, let it be. For this isn't my doing, it's not in my control, it's God's doing. And God has called the Son to a very special ministry. But she was with them in the beginning. And she was with them at the end. This holy mother of Jesus. <clears throat> when she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, as the story goes this season of the year, Elizabeth says to Mary, Blessed is she who has believed. That Mary develops a faith that is incredible, a faith which surrenders her life to whatever God is doing, even though she can't fathom it, she can't understand it. When it's the tendency of all of us, is it not to make our way to God? <laughs> to build a tower of Babylon where we can get to God in our own human arrogance. We can find our way to God, we can make our way to God. We can make God whatever we want God to be. The story today reminds us that that's not something any of us can do. It's not our making our way to God by taking a piece of religiosity from here or there or wherever we take it from and, and making a faith for ourselves where we can make God into whatever we want God to be. But the story of Mary is what? It's God coming to her. It's God being born in her.
It's not Mary a seeking out, not Mary a climbing to God, not Mary a trying to find God, not Mary trying to attain God, but it's God, it's Mary in all of her poverty, allowing God to come to her, allowing God to be born in her. Brothers and sisters, God comes to us not by our own devices, not by our own climbing to God, but it comes through the gift of faith. For God comes to us as God came to Mary and gives to Mary all that she needs to trust in what God is doing in her life. So may Christ be born in us this day that our ultimate trust does not lie in anything in this world or anything that we have, but it lies in God coming to be born in us. May that birth take place in you and me tonight, tomorrow, and may we say with Mary, Whatever the circumstances may be, what? Let it be. Let it be, God, according to your will, according to your word. Because I have not the answers, I have not the means, but let it be according to your will. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh,